Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Our favorite equipment tester that specializes in highly accelerated lifespan testing of equipment and also runs a side business as a landscaper decided I needed more trailer content for this channel. So he graciously did his destructive testing thing and found all the flaws and made a few of his own in this 2000 and old 12,000 pound Cronkite tilt bed equipment trailer. So I believe this is a 2005 and 16 years old might not sound like it's that bad, but up here in a land of corruption and rust, anything that's made out of metal that has survived 16 salty winters isn't going to be exactly new uh, or in the best shape or usually even usable. But somehow this little guy has survived. Uh, to make matters worse, this trailer is actually used to bring the bobcat from site to site for plowing. So it's out in the worst of the worst, that slushy, salty mix that gets packed into everything and just sits there and gives the salt plenty of time to eat whatever metal it's attached to. Uh, yeah, it's covered in that for hours on end because they're out at sites. They do wash it off when they get back, but you can only do so much. And it sees that every time it snows. Now I do see this trailer about every six months to make sure that it's gonna be ready for a safety test. Sometimes I see it sooner if the noises the trailer is making as they drag it down the road can no longer be drowned out by the radio in the truck, or if the sparks and flames coming from the trailer are beginning to get distracting to other drivers. So the last time I saw this trailer, it was actually in fairly decent condition. All I needed was a wire to this light fixed and it was ready to go. I made a mistake of mentioning that it was actually in pretty good shape. Well, he took on the personal challenge to make sure I never see it in that condition again. So, uh, we have a little work to do back here. This was also complete the last time I saw it. You can speculate on what happened. I don't want to. I'm just going to fix it. Like his other trailers, I just stop asking questions. So the first order of business is going to be replacing this little ramp part back here again. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of where the center is, all the way across the back. It should be flat. There's supposed to be a piece on the bottom and some pieces on the side. It's fully enclosed little triangle piece here. There used to be anyway. So our trailer jackknife warning system has deployed. It also doubles as a spare tire mount. Uh, but when you jackknife the truck, it kind of bends it. And I would leave it, except for the tire is actually pressed up against the frame here. So if you unbolt it from the mount, you're never gonna get a tire back on there. It'll probably come off with a little bit of work, but it's gonna be really hard to get the other one on. So I'm just going to straighten it back out a little bit uh, not completely, because if I do, they will definitely try to mangle it worse. Uh, if I just straighten it out a little bit, maybe they won't notice and they'll leave it alone. Maybe I should just jackknife it the other way. Does it work like that? I don't know. No trailer repair is complete without a completely destroyed plug. At least not from this company. Uh, there's also the standard broken away, break away. Uh, a junction box that is well protected yet completely destroyed. Don't ask. Although the only thing that did survive is the one thing that we've had a lot of problems with. Um, and that's the breakaway. Usually the truck that this is attached to is an F750. And if you've ever ridden in an F750, uh, they have no suspension. They actually come with a neck brace and six months of chiropractic care when you buy them. So this actually gets bounced around quite a bit and has a tendency to puke its battery out. So we found a new way to make sure it stays in. It comes with zip ties on here and those would break after, I don't know, two or 3,000 bounces, which on Illinois roads is about a block and a half. So we started putting these zip ties over the top and they last for a little while and they break. Uh, but if you can keep the landscaper 
up on these, uh, it seems to hold it together pretty well. Uh, it took a lot of training and electric cattle prod, but I got him to do it. So that survived. Unfortunately, that's about all that survived. So we have a lot of electrical work up here to do. That looks like almost it. Of course, once we do all this, I'm sure we'll find lights that don't work, which usually pretty easy. And we'll see as we go. We're also going to have to do all of our normal maintenance once we get our electrical system working, make sure our trailer brakes work, check all of our bearings, and just random stuff like that. I'll have to stock up on some bearing leaves in order to do those bearings. So we're going to start by cutting out the paper mache, I mean metal, that used to make up our ramps in the back. I'm going to leave the center in there where the lights are because I don't want to have to cut all that out. So I'm just going to cut out the parts that are destroyed and replace that. It saves material and time. We're going to grind everything off. We'll grind all these welds out. So I switched to the bigger grinder, but it was too slow and boring, even for me. Yeah, the king of boring. Yes, I know a plasma cutter would be much faster, but that was like an hour away and I was too lazy to drive to go get it. So we're just gonna cut it with the die grinder. And apparently a reciprocating saw. Apparently the video guy thought it would be a good idea to put the camera on top of the trailer that he was cutting on. So sorry about the shaky video. He's been reprimanded. We got our little braces that go inside, our little triangles. They're supposed to be connected to the piece on the bottom and that ramp part. There was no longer a piece on the bottom and half the ramp was missing. In the pile. So now we'll cut the other side out. So this triangle piece was still connected, so we'll cut that out and toss this whole piece in the pile. Pile. And we'll use our sawzall again, cut the bottom. The bottom was much thinner. The water's been sitting on it, rotting it out, so it cut pretty easy. No need to grind those welds, they broke right out. Pile. So we ground all the weld smooth, cleaned up the area we're going to be welding to. We'll get ready for our new piece. First we'll put the bottom piece in. Just put it up on a jack. We'll just jack it up to that center piece. There'll be a double panel underneath those lights. I guess it's not really double because there's only half of what should be there on the original one. It's like one and a half panels. So we'll clamp it up. We'll move our jack to the outside. Hold it in place. Then we'll weld our little triangle supports in there. We're just going to tack them in for now. We'll get everything fitting. And then we'll weld it up completely. Put our supports on the other side. And we'll put our supports in the center. Now 
Now we're gonna switch to the real welder so we can actually weld. The other one was just attacking in place. Really wasn't strong enough to weld a metal this thick. This one is. So we're gonna weld our bottom piece all in there on both sides. And now we can put the diamond plate on the top to make our ramp. Put a couple tacks in it just to hold it in place. We'll clamp it up. It's just overlapping the center where we cut it. All the other sides are just butted up against the other metal. So after it's tacked up, we'll weld it up. We'll go over the other side, do it the same way. This piece is brand new, even though it looks rusty. Still pay the same price for it. I guess the rust was free. So we'll tack it in place after we clamped it up. and continue welding. Now we can move on to some other stuff that needs attention. Like the fact that this bolt is missing. I don't know where it went, but we're gonna have to put it back in there. So we'll just jack the axle back up there, get the spring up above this bolt, put the bolt in there, and run the nut on. Tighten it up a little bit. Can't tighten it down too tight because it'll actually pinch those springs. So we'll just tighten it up enough that it's snug. And then we'll put a tack in the end of it and it's not going anywhere. Good luck to the next guy taking it off. Yeah, I'm gonna be that next guy, I guarantee it. So now that that's done, we can head up to the front, start with our electrical mess. We'll unbolt our breakaway box. It's actually still good, but when you buy the kit, everything comes with it. These are snap-on side cutter hammers. Get this bracket out of the way so we can get to the bolt. We'll unbolt the clamp for the wire and it's also the breakaway or what used to be the breakaway connector. We can unbolt our junction box. set it off to the side and we'll bolt our new one in there. Now we can bolt our battery box down. I put about six or seven of these on there. Apparently this is the first time I got one that was this size because I had to use new holes. So the self tappers drilled some new holes. I tried using one original one but it was too big. So we'll put a nut and a bolt back in that one. Give it a good shake. That's not going anywhere. So now we can put our clamp back on our cable and bolt our breakaway connector down. I like to use nuts and bolts on these because they do end up changing them. After they've rusted, if you've screwed them into the frame, they'll usually break. This way if they break, the nut just falls off the other side. You just put a new nut and bolt in, it's fine. It's much easier. So that's all set. I want to unbolt all the wires from the old junction box and put them on our new one. We'll heat shrink all the ends from the cable that came in from the front and put all wires in our plug. It's all kind of boring, so we're going to skip it. But trust me, I did it. 
in the pile. Now I'll move on to the brakes. See how bad they look. Pull the tire off. Now you pull our brake drum off. We remove the cap. Remove the keeper. And spin the nut off. Pull the bearing out of there with our bearing leaf. Everyone was asking me where you get those bearing leaves. Uh, around me, they go on sale in the fall. They're pretty much free. You can pick them up anywhere. So I think I figured out why these brakes don't work. The lining, not really attached to the shoe anymore. And we got a couple of springs that are broken. So, the good thing about trailer brakes is we don't even have to mess with this. We're just going to replace the whole backing plate and everything. Because it's kind of a mess in there. So we'll pull the back tire off. See how that one looks. Hopefully it's not as bad. Pull the retainer out of there. Spin the nut off. The grease that's in there is looks like vanilla icing. It must have been past its expiration date because it does not taste good at all. So we have our snap-on bearing leaf. And this drum's off. These brakes don't look too bad. A little rusty, but in Illinois, that's considered good. So this looks like the only wheel we need brakes on. So we'll spin the nuts off the backing plate. Cut the two wires to the magnet. Right about there and in the pile. Now we got our new backing plate. Brakes are installed and everything. All we do is bolt it on and connect our two wires and we're done. Now we can pack our bearings. Got some of that expired vanilla icing. Maybe it's mayonnaise. I'm not sure. So we'll pack our bearings at record speed. You think I would have learned to bring the bearing packer with after the last time I forgot it, since I hate doing this. Now we use what's left to go decorate a cake. Pound our seal in there. And we'll slide the brake drum back on. We'll adjust the brakes later. There's a slot in the back. Just reach in there with an adjustment tool. Spin the wheel. Slide the outer bearing in. Put our washer in. Spin the nut on there. Tighten it down. Click. We torqued it right, click, and you put the keeper back on there. And I'll put the dust cap on. Resist the urge to smash the heck out of it. We'll leave that for the landscapers. Somehow they manage to smash every one of these. Usually they're missing. So since I didn't get to destroy that, we'll smash the fender. Looks like it might have had a flat one time. Bent the heck out of this fender. 
so we'll straighten it out a little bit since the tires are off and it's easy to get to. And I need to work out my frustrations. Still had a little frustration left, so we're going to straighten out the rest of the dents in the fender. So a lot of you guys always ask, do I lose my cool and not film it? No, I generally don't, because I work out my frustrations with a hammer. I'll straighten out the edge of the fender because I just wanted to continue hammering, I guess. So now we're on to the spare tire mount. It isn't going to bend very easy, so we're going to heat it up a little bit. Once it's warm, it should bend pretty easy. Resist the urge to touch the glowing parts. They look friendly, but they're not. So just stick a pry bar in there, bend the wheel back, and then bend it down. It's starting to cool, so it's getting harder and harder to move it. But we pretty much got it where we need it. Now we're just making it look better. Like I said, we don't want to make it look too good or they're just going to try to destroy it. So now we can hammer all the buckles out of that piece after we straightened it. So it'll be a little stronger and straighter. And when it cools off, we'll turn it over to the painting gnome and he can paint all this stuff again for us. So here's our finished product. All of our electrical is back in place. I have to put some zip ties over that battery box. Our spare tire mount, straight-ish, good enough. And our ramp. See how long this one lasts. Hopefully longer than the dump trailer. So our clearance light bracket survived. The clearance lights, not so much. Looks like they backed into a gravel pile and punched one of the lights in. It still works, so I guess that's a bonus. And our breakaway is already broken away. Our well-protected junction box is somehow destroyed. Seriously, guys, are you trying? But our spare tire mount is still there. So is our spare tire. It's not even bent. The lid for the toolbox still works. And we have all four wheels and tires. I'm calling that a win. So after they've had it for a couple more months, we should have enough for a whole other video on that trailer. So until then, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.